This week on Dr. Drew After Dark. I can't believe I'm going to say this, Dr. Drew. How much blood was in your cum? I've got an irritation in my BAC, my ball ass connector. Which would be the taint, right? How do you feel about Santa? When they ask a question, you got you to gotta tell them. I like that. I'm anti-Santa. Yeah. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey everyone, welcome to Dr. After Dark. I appreciate you all being here. Appreciate those voice messages at 818-253-1693 and the emails at uh, drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. Support the people that support us. Rational Revolution, everybody. I think the Rational Revolution is upon us. Consistent with that, my guest today, Rob Eiler. Rob, how you doing, buddy? Good, how Speaking are you? of the rational revolution, what is the rational some, revolution? Something that Christina and I used to talk about. I know that um, you've had Christina and Tom on your show, and I'll, I'll talk about your show in just a second. Um, but she used to come on this show, and I would we would complain about things, and she go, eh, "It's just stupid. It's irra- rationality is coming. There, there's going to be a rational revolution." Can you show oh, Rob yeah. the mugs, the rational revolution mugs? And people started sending in all this. A uh, sort of Soviet-style iconography <laughs> about the revolution. It was fantastic. Uh, the salad days. Um, and I still drink, there is a cup, yeah. Uh, there it is. Look Look at that. Oh, can you enlarge it? Can you make it big? There you are. Look at the picture. Yeah. Look at the picture of her and then me with the sort of the the, the Lenin pose. <laughs> and, and she looks like some sort of um, Mata Hari uh, rising up off the, with the... Uh, the, the the star rising over her head. That's great. It's fantastic. So those cup, those mugs are still available, are they not? Yeah, the rational. <laughs> I suggest everyone participate in the rational revolution. You know, as it pertains to, I didn't know I was going to talk about this, but here we are. Let's go. Um, and let me just say, for check out not today, pal. Oh, Do please go now, everybody. Uh, Jamie Lynn Sigler, Rob Eiler, YMH Studios YouTube channel, and everywhere you get your podcasts. Go see not today, pal. Um, Thank you. And I I love by the way the end. TP that the sort of subway signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I dig that. Yeah, that's a, just a nice way to to brand this thing. But I, I realized that there. I was talking to a guy uh, on a, a stream show yesterday, and he brought up a great point. He goes, "We live in a time when people are irrationally certain, irrational certainty, and irrational certainty exists on both ends." You know, and it, I, we were talking. We happen to be talking about vaccines or something and he goes there's there's people that are rationally certain that they're only good and there are people that are rash, irrationally certain that they're only bad and the reality is it, we don't have all the data there should be uncertainty now you can go kind of drift to one side or the other but you're uncertain about it you have a certain amount of sort of humility about all this but there's a weird certainty in everything today that drives me fucking crazy, frankly. Well, because they put this thing where if you are uncertain, it means you're this. Like, if you're uncertain about the vaccine, it means you love Trump. <laughs> and then people are like, well, what? I don't love Trump. So what? then you have to, like, when I went, so what? I went back to New York, uh, you know, nine months into COVID or whatever. And uh, all these people, everyone's like, yeah, hey, you know, got vaccinated, vaccinated, vaccinated. And then as soon as fucking people were at dinner, they have three or four drinks, this, they grab me, they go, I didn't fucking get vaccinated. Right. People were scared to talk about it. So then everyone They're thought still, everyone still, was vaccinated. Still scared. Yeah. Still scared. Oh, and so, I, people are starting to admit to me now that they have fake cards too. That oh. that was not admitted to at all. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a rare thing. I'm hearing a lot about that now. Yeah. Which yeah. is wild. I mean And there were doctors giving them out. Oh yeah. 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 There was Crazy. The, it, it was a weird time. It's still weird. That's what I that's what drives me. Let, let's get over it, everybody. Let's just start talking about what might be, what good, instead sort of I, I have a I have a guy I'm in an email exchange with. He just fights with me all the time. He's a good scientist. <laughs> and I just keep thinking he's irrationally certain about stuff. And, and it's actually a good procedure for me because it makes me think things through and try to clarify my thoughts and stuff. So my uncertainty can go one way or the other. Yeah. But, I'm, but I, you know, uncertainty, skepticism, these are the fundamentals of scientific thought. And scientists left that behind. Like, I, this is science. And we know the answer. You ever, do you ever see the South Park on this? I saw one of them. There were two, right? I just remember I the, the one, one with the with the hamsters take over the world or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ham, and they <laughs> and they are and they lose religion. They are pure scientists, but when they when they when they they end up just um, worshiping science, and then when they cuss, they go, "Science, damn you!" Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my God, we we are worshiping creatures. We are. And, and then it got to the point where, like, when Joe Rogan was doing all the stuff he was doing, then there would where be where he got treatment. You mean, or were we just talking about talking stuff? about yeah. stuff? And there were yeah. people like Sam Harris who were mad at him for talking about it. Yeah. Like they were like, you shouldn't. People be are talking mad at me for this. talking about it. They're mad at me for interviewing people that have alternative points of view. You shouldn't. You can't platform them. Don't platform. What does that? You, so you get to decide what the public hears, really, that you have that kind of certainty and hubris? My thing is, look, I worked in a psychiatric hospital for 35 years. Everybody gets paranoid, and paranoid people get very paranoid if you withhold information, if you hide things. It's yeah. immediately when people fill in with all kinds of stupid shit ideas. Yeah. That's when they just, ugh, they go nutty, as opposed to constant, constant uh, fresh air and sunlight. And they, they eventually get to the truth. It may take some time. And by the way, these people that have been silenced, were, were you canceled at all during the whole thing? I, I don't exist anywhere. So they can't cancel me. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not on social media. I don't. Right. Where can, what are they going to do? Come to my house? <laughs> like you, they mm -hmm. won't, they don't do that, mm -hmm. you know? No, people, yes. But I'm saying people in, in person yeah. don't cancel you. People on the internet cancel you and then they'll go to extremes. Right. But like in person, when you're talking to people, they never, like nobody ever lost their mind about anything I've ever said in person. Yes. It's always. I still am around people that I, I feel their stomach tightening. When right, topics right. Come up, they're like, yeah, mm, yeah. You know, ma mass masking doesn't appear to work. If you want to wear an N95, immediately. <laughs> no, I'm like, if you want to wear an N95 and wear it properly, you you could probably do something with that. That's good. But yeah, yeah. You can't mask between bites and expect anything to be accomplished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, and you can't also wear a surgical mask with a big loops here and a nose gut. <laughs> Yeah, and then the, the mask is dirty. Like, you could tell the mask is, like, you know, three months old, and there's, like, holes. I mean, you see some crazy shit. Carolla was telling me the other day that he uh, he, he was trying to buy tickets at a ticket booth outside, and it was during the the crazy the, more, the crazier period. And the woman goes, uh, we're going to have a problem here. We, you, I can't talk to you unless you get a get a mask on. And he's like, we're outside. There's a, there's a giant – you're in – I'm outside. Yeah. <laughs> Need a mask. He looked down. There was a some ground into the dirt. He put it on, <laughs> put on the mask that was right off the street that a car had run over. Fantastic. You know what's funny? You say about like paranoid people get yeah, more paranoid. You know where like part of I remember like the first window to my addiction opening was when, so you know my my grandfather would be in the bar all day and everybody would be smoking. And I always wanted to try a cigarette. And my mom, because I had asthma, my mom told me if you ever try a cigarette, you'll die. So I remember being, you know, whatever I was, 11, 12. And I remember the first time where I was like, I'm going to risk my life. Like, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna probably die right now. Like, my friends are smoking cigarettes, like Marlboro Reds. And I took a pull of a cigarette. I got lightheaded, and I didn't die. And I was like, instantly, it was like, what else are they lying about? And it was like, right. let's the, go. Like, that, 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 make that, the calls. Like <laughs> That is why you don't lie to your kids. That yes. Is. Interesting. How do you feel about Santa? You can you can tell them fibs and stories, but when they ask a question, you gotta you gotta tell them. I like that. I'm anti Santa. Yeah. You you can also not answer questions. You can you can go. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's totally appropriate. I don't. Know, I've heard about Santa, but I don't know. I've never seen him. Yeah, right, Something and like and that. or you can go. Um, hey, I I I don't hey, look. I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna tolerate any drug use. Uh, just so you know, I'll, I'll be big consequences if you, you know, are caught doing drugs, whatever. Uh, did you do drugs when you were a kid? If you go, well, son, uh, yes, I, I, you, you have to talk about it because you're in recovery. That's a different thing. Yeah, but yeah. if somebody was just sort of using during their adolescence, go, yeah, man, at 13, I got wasted. I was drinking. I smashed a car up. And then I was smoking weed for three months. I failed out of school. He goes, that's why I don't want that to happen to you. You've just given that kid a license to start where you left off. No matter how bad the consequences, they they consider hypocrisy that you were able to do that and I wasn't. So what you say is, hey, look, uh, I'm just telling you what I'm expecting of you. What I did or didn't do is uh, uh, someday I will tell you, but not now. It's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about what I what I'm expecting from you. That's it. Period. End yeah. of conversation. Totally different. And, and then they'll go, oh, that be you, but you, you, but that. I, not not discussing it. We're talking about you. Yeah, fuck Santa. <laughs> I'm in. So, how do you like doing the show? Great. Yeah, what's coming up? So great. I love anything, it. Uh, anything uh, of interest or anything? Has, does Jamie Lynn move out here? Jamie Lynn lived out here before. So I came, what? To, I came to visit Jamie for her birthday out here. 
And Tom and Christina were like, come out on our boat and hang out. And then they were like, we want you to do a show here. Oh, that's great. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, if I can like I, Austin. Can I, can I hang in this boat every day? Can, right? I, go, yeah. can I go live in your guest house? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, if, as long as I like Austin. So I stayed here for like a couple of weeks and, hang, and I was like, yeah, sure, I could do this. Like, you know, so I just like I came here and now I to me, like I love New York. I love New York City. Everywhere else is kind of the same. But you guys were in L.A., right? You were well, I was in L.A. for like right before COVID. I happened to go to L.A. But weren't you guys doing your pod there? Yeah. And so, that, so, did you come in and out for that? No. So I went to L.A. before COVID and it was like, oh, let's see what happens here. And then the COVID hit and it was like, oh, now, you know, uh, now you're stuck. California, what a disaster. Oh, my God. That place, <laughs> that place sucks. Like, I, I can't. Just, it's hard to imagine why this country would contemplate putting the governor that destroyed a state in the White House, why they would even think about that? Well, because if you don't like him, it means you like Trump. Oh my you know God. what I mean? They'll just get you with shit like that, and then you go, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, everyone's quiet at dinner. Everyone's like, well, I don't, I, I don't want them to think I like Trumps. I don't want them to think I'm not vaccinated. I don't want. And you're like, yo, yo, you gotta be, because because it, it the people get conditioned at work. It's like, oh, I can't talk about it at work. So they're like, oh, if I can't talk about it at dinner, like whatever, I'm already. Oh my you God, know. where do I live? I live in the Twilight Zone. Yeah. This, I thought I thought this country was different. Yeah. I, I mean, this. In, luckily, we're in this industry where it's like the crazier you are, the more people want to listen to you. Yes. So, like, you, we're like at work. That's not the case. You right. Know? Like, they want to sit next to the person who's like not crazy. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which sounds nuts here, you know. <laughs> right. You guys are laughing. How dare you? <laughs> He's right, though. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, your addiction span. It's interesting to me how eleven, twelve is a common entry age for people that are going to develop severe addiction. I don't know why it is. It's often, I, I used to think it was because those were usually traumatized kids uh, and they were looking for solutions to how they were feeling. Yeah. But it's not necessarily that. It's, it's you get a big, uh, if you have a big genetic burden for addiction, you tend to enter around age 12 also. It seems so young. Seventh grade, eighth grade. It yeah. Seems, it seems odd that that's when kids would get going with it. But the weird thing is it's also like that's kind of when it's like around, you know what I mean? Like it's I guess people going into high school. First time it comes around, that's or true. Or like I guess, no, that's junior high. But like, you know, when I'm when I'm nine, I'm not like, there's no people doing shit where you're like, hey, what's that? What are they? It's like, oh, they're playing some, you know, with Ninja Turtles. Yes. You know what I mean? And then yes. all of a sudden you're 11, 12 and you're like, okay, this kid who's 14 is smoking or like this. And then you're like, okay, like it kind of. You Did know. you get hooked on cigarettes too, by the way? Oh, everything. Yeah. Are you I still on cigarettes? Fully, we can. We no. have. Uh, we have a solution here. Apparently, <laughs> the guys. The guys are intent that I should take one of these. We discussed it in one of our recent shows, and I was like, I'm. I'm in favor of nicotine replacement. They're like, really? Take one. I haven't had a cigarette in ten years. I'm not. You're I'm off nicotine not, entirely. Completely. Yeah. Which is interesting because usually, if you take nicotine before the age of fifteen, if you get hooked on it, did you get hooked on before fifteen? Oh, I was. Yeah. Yeah. Day, it's. Minimum. It's almost impossible to get off it completely. Yeah. It's good for you. Well, I'm special, Dr. Drew. Yeah, you are special. Indeed, <laughs> indeed you are. Indeed. You know, my grandfather, so my grandfather was full-blown uh, alcoholic at the bar every day. He, when my grandmother passed away, he was like, I'm done drinking. And we're like, yeah, sure, we'll see how long this lasts. Never picked up a drink again. And mm -hmm. then uh, uh, cigarettes, one day he said, I'm done with cigarettes. Never fucking picked up a cigarette and again. How old was he when that all went down? When my grandmother passed away, I, I'm just totally guessing, I don't know, in this early, late 50s or 60s, but then cigarettes was later. Yeah. So that is, there's something called natural recovery, they call that, uh, which people that, that ha it, you really only see it with alcohol, right? Because other mm. drugs, you don't see people, uh, sometimes cocaine, sometimes. But when people do that with cocaine, I always wonder if they're really drug addicts. Because you, you can get going with cocaine a lot and not really be a drug addict. If you're on heroin, you're a drug addict. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so you yeah. hope it's a drug addict, depends on drug addict. Um, but alcohol occasionally, you know, this is, a, this is a genetic spectrum, right? And so there's different flavors of this illness. I've never seen anybody say with a North American Indian background, stop alcohol, ever. Right. That's a, that's a certain thing. Uh, I've never seen it with an Irish background. Is that you? Oh, yeah. well, I've seen it. I've heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, uh, sorry. My grandpa's German. My, I was going to say, yeah, where yeah, I've yeah. seen it is German and Czech and Polish. Yeah, he's Czech. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Where all of a sudden... I mean, and and they're pretty hardcore alcoholics too. I'm like, I was my my wife's father was that, and I was shocked. He just like he was drinking. Who's drinking a fifth a day? No problem. Just oh do yeah. It. And and then just he was like, she confronted him. He went, okay, I'm stopping. And he stopped. I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. believe it. I, I was shocked. And uh, I was like, wow. And he did not become a rageaholic, which I was expecting. Uh oh, here we go. Now something's coming. 
It, it's it's some the rage genetic... went away from my grandpa. Yeah, it that's for him too. He became away. less of an asshole. That's yeah, true. yeah, yeah. Where he'd be yeah. like, "All right, I'm leaving," you know, instead of like the <laughs> the beef, you know. Yeah, isn't that interesting? So that that's how these genetic elements. So you had Irish and Czech, so you got yeah. a double whammy. See, I don't, I, I don't think you can. I, I don't know, but I'm just. I don't think you can outgrow the addict brain, but I think you no. can outgrow addictions. Like I feel like with for me, alcohol now, I'm like disgusted by alcohol like we're, we're like percocet if you're like percocets it's a different fucking story but i walk into a hotel and i see like alcohol there and i'm like wow i'm so grateful that some people see this and it triggers them where for me i see it and i, I look at alcohol the same way i look at like junk food i don't eat anymore where yeah. i'm like oh consuming all yes. that Ugh. however you would quickly get over that hump if you needed to Right. If it was all you had and you just it went into full relapse mode. I, I have dealt with this with opiate addicts before where they're like, uh, yeah, I'm no, mm -mm. and And they really are shocked when it gets going. They're, they're surprised. and But it does. It just goes. Yeah. Once they get over that. <laughs> See, so I, I was sober for like five years, never had a drink. And I went to a dinner where like back in New York, first time, I remember on a rooftop and everybody's excited and everybody's ordering drinks. I'm like, oh, club soda. And I go to take a big sip and, and it was vodka, vodka club soda, yeah. which, and I'm, and I like, I spit it out. I'm like, I'm fine. But every, it changed the whole dinner. All of a sudden, everybody's like, oh my God, thinking like, I'm going to fall off the wagon now and all this <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, no. Even I'm, the, even the, you know, the drop dead alcoholics don't really do that. It's not, right. it's not, it's not like, like a cartoon where the hair goes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> so I'm in my head. <laughs> I'm like, apart. I'm, I'm like, I'm fine. But everybody was like freaking out like yeah. full freak out and i'm like yo that's because that's a bunch of people that don't understand addiction though. right so then i um so now for like a month after that i'm disturbed every night laying in bed where i'm like i'm not who they think i like i don't think this thing has this power over me not like, like that so i what i did was i called my best friend and i said we're gonna go to dinner and i'm gonna have three or four sips of a glass of wine and i want to see if i turn into fucking a vampire you know what i mean i want to see what happens I had three sips. I was like, "Ugh, I don't, I don't want this." Wait, and that was five years ago. I'm just. It's good. It, it, I, I would recommend that. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> but, yeah, but, like uh, I wouldn't do it with Percocets. But, but, right. <laughs> yeah. And, and and it's not like, oh, how do you do that? I know, I, I get it. It, it's in fact, when people get into trouble with that, it's the flirting that gets them into trouble, not the using. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's the, the life. It, not the life even so much as like, oh, I can control this now. Oh, maybe I, maybe I can have a little more, you know, a little more. A little, oh, I'm controlling it. Look right, at this. Yeah, and no, then kaboom, no, no. there it goes. Yeah. I still have dreams up until last week where like I have a dream, I'm drinking a beer and I wake up and it's fucking, you know, at least 30 minutes where I'm just not normal. Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Where I'm like, fuck. And, and I'm like, yo, it was a dream. Like you have to tell your body to like, also, you, there's a lot of guilt and shame and weirdness that goes with it too. Are you still going to meetings or? No, I have I never did. You never did. I went to see a specialist for. Two years for C after cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, CBT. I don't know. I, I don't know if you call it, but it was to get off of Xanax. It was to get off of Percocet. It was to like you know, yeah, and just. But you know what it was too. It's that's like, amazing. That's, that's well done. But, but then it gets you. your. That's probably that check thing. That's probably that genetics. But also, it's like I feel like just with the way I grew up, and like growing up, and all of a sudden getting these tools to be like, oh, okay, I can do this. Like I can work out i can meditate i can talk about stuff like oh my god you know like i could talk about things instead like all this stuff and it just yeah i don't know i i it's all important it's it's all how you don't pick things up but if you do pick something up it it, it would be on you have to know that yeah yeah you yeah. have to know that. see and i feel that with like i don't feel that way with alcohol and cigarettes but like percocets in my head so I would never. Cigarettes really sneak up on people. Oh, they, for sure. They chip a little bit, and then all of a sudden it goes on. Yeah, I wouldn't even. Yeah. You're trying to get me to fucking pack us in. <laughs> What's uh, with this guy? No, those guys are trying to get me to pack us in. <laughs> yeah. Do it. A zen. Zin, zen. Jesus. <laughs> zen pack Whenever zen. they are. I, I've done those snooze packs before, and I get, like, sick. But uh, for, I'll do anything for the show, gentlemen. Uh, if we need to do one, we'll, we'll just tease it for now. See, oh, Chad's what, leaning in, like, really? Well, yeah. <laughs> here's what I think is insane: how like there are people, and again, I, I don't, I don't want to judge. I'm just saying from my brain, mm. when I see people who are sober but they drink like five energy drinks a day, in my head, I, I like again, I'm not judging on this. I just go, if that was me, if I take a sip, I used to be able to do cocaine for days. If I if I drink half a coffee, I'm a wreck, mm -mm. like a wreck, like something about caffeine. 
Interesting. Really fucks me up. Interesting. Yeah. Like so. to wear for, you know, I, I can't sleep for 30 hours, like off the tiniest bit. Interesting. It's crazy. That's yeah. interesting. I, on the other hand, I'm a hyper metabolizer. I, I will get like some stimulation for about seven minutes, four minutes, and then pfft, gone completely. Completely. Wow. Isn't that crazy? And we know there's different metabolism rates of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So before we go to calls, tell them again what the what the show's about, what they're going to hear, and yeah, why, why they should today, go. Yeah, not today, pal. I mean, it's you know, it's me, Jamie, who's one of my best friends in the world. Uh, obviously, we were on Sopranos together. We've been friends for 25 years, and we just bullshit. We uh, we talk to these guys in the booth. We have fun with them. There's uh, people write in, and um, we do something called sweet and sour because she's very sweet and I'm not so sweet. <laughs> so we give our opinions on stuff and usually she takes the sweet side and I take the sour Different side. Different from and, your old, because uh, in the old one you used to bring people in and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So we had we did that with our friend Kat. I think Kat I was on one of your first yeah, yeah, yeah. podcasts. You, you might have been our first guest. Wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were. I think you were. I think you were our first guest. Yeah. Yeah. And we uh and that was just enough. Yeah, we were we had no format. We just come. Yeah, but there was talk. there was chemistry between you two. I because I, I, I didn't know it was your first show. I couldn't tell that it was the first show. Yeah, and our friend Kasim, who the three of us, it just I really, you know, I loved the shit we would end up talking about. Yeah. yeah. It was great. Interesting. Well, you'll love it. So again, it is not today, pal. Check it out. YMH. That's Thank where you'll you. find it. Lynn, what's going on? Hi. Hey. I calling you regarding my husband's penis problem yes okay let's go for about four years he has been having some pain while ejaculating um he says it feels like it's stuck at the base sometimes when he's finished he has to strain to pee mm. it will temporarily sting and then go away mm -hmm. he recently just passed like a jelly blood clot that like women would get um from his penis through his penis he just now is agreeing to go to the Hold on, a blood what? clot through his penis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rob, Rob's having trouble listening, but go ahead. What's the matter, Ron? I just, I don't like hearing stuff like that because then I'm like, am I going to pass a jelly <laughs> fucking thing? You know what I mean? I'm like, fuck, is there a jelly coming out of my dick? I, I'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> well, and this has been going on for a few years, right? Yes. Has it been treated in any way? Um, I just recently have been able to get him to go to the doctor when he passed the blood clot. Okay. And they ran a test just to make sure he didn't have an infection. He uh -huh. didn't. Uh -huh. And then they just gave him a strainer and said, it'll pass. It's probably just a stone. Oh, my goodness. And they weren't really out. That was a physician did yeah. that? Was that, that was a, a board certified doctor did that? We don't, well, we don't have insurance and we don't have, uh, you know primary care for him so we just went to a walk-in oh boy all right well here is the deal that that was that is inadequate that is not okay uh <laughs> that is completely completely uh wrong uh so here's the full spectrum of what's going on here yes it could be a kidney stone but why is it limited to his sort of your or lower urogenital tract Kidney stones hurt up in the kidney, up above. They get caught in the ureters. Mm -hmm. They cause pain. They cause the whole urine to turn red. They don't cause you to ejaculate blood. So there's clearly something else going on. Yes, kidney stone could be a part of it, but to say you have a kidney stone and not get an ultrasound to be sure your kidneys aren't obstructed and failing, that is bordering on malpractice, in my humble opinion. Then... The ejaculating of blood, usually it is not a big deal. Oh, well, a little correction. He didn't ejaculate the blood. He peed out the blood clot, but the ejaculating part is where it's painful. He, and he is, has he ever ejaculated blood? No. Ah, okay. Thank God. Well, I have. Jeez. I'll, I'll, I'll share with you. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre proportioned ingredients, seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the trips to the grocery store. Or count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. We've got a crazy schedule. This can make it easy to fall back into your dinner time recipe rut. Keep mealtime exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every week. So there's always something delicious to discover with HelloFresh. With so many in-season ingredients, you'll taste all the freshness of fall in every bite of HelloFresh's chef-crafted recipes. And it really it tastes like they're produced by a chef. HelloFresh does all the shopping and the meal planning for you. The ingredients arrive at your doorstep, pre-proportioned, ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. 
It's so easy. It's also cool that uh, my son is learning to cook with us when we are alone at home. I love the meals he makes. And the fact is the recipes are just, I, there's not one I haven't loved. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Dr. Drew and use code 50 Dr. Drew for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, that is HelloFresh.com slash 50, the number 50, D-R-D-R-E-W, HelloFresh.com slash 50 Dr. Drew. And you'll get that 50% off plus free shipping. I mean, it's a great deal. Check it out. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Because I had to have I had prostate cancer and I had to get prostate biopsies. And the prostate is what produces the fluid. And if you have a biopsy, everything bleeds in there. And so what gets collected is the blood down in the seminal vesicles. And then you will ejaculate blood. This is fun. Your partners will love that. Mm. They dig that. No, they won't. Save that load for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer white, everybody. It's red. Uh, so, it, but cool. the blood in itself can cause a lot of irritation, like what he's describing. So everything he's describing could just be from blood. The question is, where is the blood coming from? And the first place to look, since it's not in the ejaculate, it's it, you have to look in the bladder and you have to look in the kidneys. Kidneys that are producing blood can have all kinds of different illnesses. Something called glomerulonephritis commonly has sort of dark urine associated with it. Bladder cancers, bladder tumors, bladder uh, are you know sort of growths of uh, vascular growths can uh, can bleed, and uh, these things have to be checked out. And the fact that they didn't send him to a urologist to sort of go through the process a little bit is shocking to me, just shocking. So kidney stones may or may not be part of the issue, but the fact that he's having clots and the fact that it's always causing irritation means that there's always something going on there. And where is that blood coming from? And it could be from the prostate too. You could have prostate infections sometimes that cause blood, you know, various kinds. Of, and if you don't treat that, you can get chronic prostates and prostate stones. So there's a million different things that could be going on here. None of, all of which are kind of, need to be, you can get up with chronic problems, some of them serious, some of them not so serious, but kind of needs to be worked up. He's got to see a urologist. I okay? think the walk-in doctor was right. I think he's fine. <laughs> and then Rob Eiler says do nothing. Yeah, I'm going with uh, fine. He's but, fine, Lynn. But uh, I'm, I'm, Is there sh a question I'm shocked. Ask our new, I just got him an appointment with a primary care doctor and the, his first appointment will be next month. Is there a certain test or questions that I should ask to try to like get him in going in the right direction? The very first order of business is make sure his kidneys are functioning normally. The second thing okay. would be a kidney ultrasound to see if there are in fact stones. And then the next thing is to start looking at the bladder and prostate and then you would need a urologist to do that. That's the third thing rather. Okay. Awesome. All right, Thank Lynn, you. you got it. Yeah, ejaculating blood's a fun, good time. I can't believe I'm going to say this, Dr. Drew. How much blood was in your cum? <laughs> uh, all. It's just all, all blood. It's all blood. <laughs> wow. I like that Rob goes, <laughs> 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 he gasps, all bl <laughs> blood. Wow. Dude, that's... Good, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like that's an addict behavior or like related to addict behavior in that any you, way? Yes. The, no, no, no. I was going to say the, uh, like being like, I don't, I don't want to go to a doctor. I don't oh. want to. Uh, that's the willfulness of addiction, right? You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what they call will uh, self will run riot. Because I I see it with a lot of addicts, yeah. even people who are like you know, twenty years out of the yeah. gate, where it's like where it's like no no I'm I'm fine. Yeah, I I sort of admire that about addicts because that's that survival thing that they have, which is extraordinary. Right. Uh, but it's the willfulness that makes them dumb with it. You know yeah. I mean? That's where it goes from survivor to dumb. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a seven year old with chest pain. No, I'm fine. Well, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be dumb. But, it, but it's always the men <laughs> too, right? And men are always way worse that way. Yeah. When I was uh, an addict, I thought like I I couldn't die. Where now I'm like, oh my god, life is so fragile. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a, it, everything is so well, fragile. It, it, and t tell me if this isn't accurate. You start not caring if you die. That that that's the really bad part of addiction. Right. Yeah. Just, I didn't. Like, or, or it's just more important to use. Than anything. Yeah, but also it was just, it was not believable. Like, I'd be like, come on, like, he, he died from, like, come on, yeah. you know, like, it's just, we're having a good time over here, you know? That's youth, too. Yeah, 100%. All right, Kim, what's going on? Hi, I just had a question about uh, menopause and birth control. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've been on birth control for many years, and 
I don't know if it has any effect on menopause. Like, is it going to delay it? Am I going to get it sooner or anything? Uh, it doesn't, to my understanding, it doesn't cause anything sooner. But obviously, if you're on hormones and your menopause kicks in, you're not really going to experience much because you're already on these high-powered hormones. The, the issue is going to be the balance of hormones is going to get kind of weird, and you might get symptoms from that. I mean, for instance, if you're on a high progesterone uh, birth control pill, which what most of them are, and your body stops producing uh, estrogen and testosterone, you're not going to feel normal. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. But uh, people, people, yeah. Used to, people used to worry that uh, the, the menstrual periods would not reestablish themselves after people got off, off the pill. Uh, but they do, you, you know, almost always within six months. Okay. I mean, I'm 43 now, and I'm just, honestly, I just want to go through menopause and get it over with. Well, <sighs> why? <laughs> Why like why 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 do you are you what, you just want to find out what it's what's happening or or do you want to manage it properly? What do you want to do? Well, no, I just I, I'm I'm tired of you know every month I'm either you know in pain or I see nastiness all month. You know? I see. Yeah, I see. You want to stop having periods, which is a different thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, <laughs> and there's. And, God decides when that's going to happen. I, I mean, you could go on seasonal or one of these pills that's continuous and not menstruate. I mean, you can do that for six, six months or so at a time. Dr. Drew comes all of his blood out. <laughs> Kim, I'm sorry about my partner here. <laughs> his name is Rob Eiler. <laughs> he, dropped, he dropped a right, right after I know, I said wanna, that. I don't want to I don't want to subject her to any more of this, Rob. Uh, that's what he does to all the callers. <laughs> <laughs> No, I usually put people back on hold pretty quickly. Uh, oh, goodness. Uh, hmm, oh, here you go. Here's a Rob question. Mike, what's going on? Hey, I'm calling. I've got an irritation in my BAC. BAC. Big ass cock. My ball ass connector. Ball ass connector. Uh-huh. Is that a term that you figure everybody knew? Well, he's auditioning to have a podcast. Well, that's here, pretty like common you. down here in the South. All right. In the South, they call them BAC. All right. In my, in my tank. Your taint. There we go. I think people know what the taint Grundle is. Grundle, too, right? Grundle, chode. I've heard of the beach cities in Los Angeles, <laughs> California. Uh, your taint is burning. And is the is the skin on the taint burning? Yes. <laughs> Why is that funny? It's More funny. so just between the brown and the back of the sack. Brown and the back of the sack. Irritation, which would be the taint, right? What did I say yeah. that was funny, gentlemen? Or Help me with this. It's yeah. just hilarious. It was just so abrupt. Just, just, the <laughs> <laughs> it looks like an edit. <laughs> <laughs> he likes my timing, is what that was. So your taint is burning. Okay. Uh, that could be, you know, that could be a lot of stuff, right? I mean, there can be inflammatory you know, uh, allergic reactions. There can be, it, the skin sort of gets inflamed. It doesn't, it can easily be a fungus. Did you say, did, it says here in your sort of pre-interview that you use something, did you use some antifungal cream on it? Well, I've been using this jocket spray. Yeah. But when I do that. It burns more. It's like lighting a fire yeah, down yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you get some uh, Lamisil or some cream, like over-the-counter antifungal cream, Try that. Get a little cortade also, some cortisone cream. Try that also. Uh, you can sort of alternate the two or even put them both on at the same time if you want. So cortade and Lamisil a couple times a day. Give that a couple of days and see if that doesn't work. If it doesn't, somebody's got a, a dermatologist got to look at it. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. So cool. how do you know Good when name. you have... Uh, what were we just talking about? Taint? Uh, no, no, no. The itch. A uh, jock itch? Jo- how do you know when you have jock itch? Because, like, listen, sometimes my balls itch or my taint itch, but yeah. they, oh, they all... It, it will get itches. very red, sort of, sometimes bright red, and it will keep itching. It'll drive you crazy. And usually you'll get inside of the thighs some stuff, too. What do you recommend for that? What's I the move? I just wanted to do to him. Just try some over-the-counter stuff first. There's, there's a lot of stuff. There's all kinds of antifungal creams and sprays and things out there. Sometimes the sprays make things worse. Uh, the creams are a little milder. And then you and there's an inflammatory piece, and so you do, you'd get the itching settled down quicker, some cortisone cream. But sometimes what you can get over the counter is not strong enough of either, frankly. And so you have to sometimes take pills for it, sometimes take a stronger cortisone, like even an ointment sometimes. Yeah, because I have eczema, so I'll get fucking patches everywhere sometimes. Mm. You know what I mean? But like mm. now that I'm healthy, all that shit 
like interesting how that it's crazy works. Crazy how it, it goes away. Like I used to go to dinners like ten years ago, and I would have band aids all over my hands because I would just from like you know being in New York in the cold, I would just have cuts. Oh yeah, like, all yeah, in my all, hands. That's all and eczema. Yeah, it's actually that's more what's called contact dermatitis. The the sort of the cuts and stuff you get in through here. It, and that's from metal and keys and oh, wow. other things you're grabbing stuff, whatever. Yeah, I would have my keys in my hand a lot to do the coke. Well, you know? there you go. Yeah. There it is. Interesting, right? Yeah. It's the nickel and the keys. It's a lot A lot of, uh, also when I started drinking water, like before the age of, I don't know, 20, I mm. never had water mm. ever. Mm. And then after that, it was like, I was like, oh, wow, I noticed like all these things. Like, you know, you feel, <laughs> you feel better. Speaking of noticing all these things, do you have any medical questions? Do I have any medical questions? Seems like you have medical anxieties a little bit. Uh, no, it's just when I hear somebody describe, like, like when you watch one of those videos where it's like, oh my god, that's like when I hear someone describe that, I imagine, I feel, you know, I'm an actor, <laughs> I'm an empath, I, I, I feel in my groin, but like I don't walk around with that stuff. But if somebody tells me like, oh, my husband had a blood clot of cum come out right in my head, I'm like, oh, here we go, like that. Am I? Is that ever gonna happen to me? It scares the shit out of me. It's not that uncommon. Wow. Uh, it's called hematospermia. It, it happens spontaneously a lot of times. And 95 times out of 100, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a, something that happens, particularly when you get a little older. What's you know, the craziest thing medically that could happen to you that you're like, oh, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Like, it's just fine. You know? That's a pretty crazy thing. Yeah, that's a pretty crazy yeah. one. Uh, I, there's probably lots of things I could think of. I, they don't Because they're not crazy to me, I don't think about them. Where someone's like, oh, my God, I'm dying. And you're like, no, that's everybody. Yeah, there's a lot. People come in with that kind of stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Or, or, uh, yeah, I can't even think of what they'd be. People get very, I was just this morning, someone was getting worked up about white spots on their on their tonsils. Like, mm, yeah, they can be kind of pus on tonsils, but it doesn't, doesn't really, it's not like, don't, don't get excited. Uh, sometimes yeah. even it's just debris and food and stuff gets caught back there. So, you know what I had that was crazy? Like, just a month ago, I learned all about this. Like, your, your, parasympathetic nerve system and your sympathetic nerve system and i went so i went to new york for like a month i got really sick when i was there but people were like because I, I went to the dermat not the dermatologist the uh what is it for allergies allergist i went to an allergist and it was like slammed packed and they were like this is the worst allergy season we've ever had like mm -hmm. it's horrible so i'm like okay i have allergies i've never had allergies before so i'm mm -hmm. like i guess this is what allergies feel like mm -hmm. but i just kept going with my trip like working out going yeah. to the gym even though i felt sure. like shit and when I came home, I realized I had these symptoms of like, okay, so I'm waking up seven times a night to pee. I have uh, my, my heart's beating, like all this stuff. And like, I'm like, oh my God, something's really wrong with me. Mm. And then as I'm reading and finding stuff out, I'm like, oh my God, like I found out the parasympathetic nerve system and that the relief when I read mm. that, I was like, this is everything that's happening to me. So I just like, I got this thing called the brain tap. Mm. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. It's like this... Uh, meditation device that okay. has like lights over your eyes lights okay. in your ears and all this stuff to like reactivate the parasympathetic okay. nervous system and it took like a few weeks before i started feeling like totally like back to normal i still think sometimes i don't know what do you i think mean it was? allergies can try could have all been allergies no no, no I'm, that's what i'm saying it wasn't allergies i thought it was allergies and i was very but, sick but, but it could have been that's what I'm saying. Oh, or no, I might because my friend was like, Oh, yeah, me and my kids, who I saw the first time I got there, he's like, We had horrible strep throat uh -huh. and all this stuff, and they were really sick. But I just thought, because I had never had allergies before, so I'm like, Man, this is what people fucking deal with. I was like dying. Uh -huh. But I'm like, Oh, that this is allergies, like I guess. Mm, and then this could be a lot of things though. But but the 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 sympathetic parasympathetic nervous systems is vitally important. Yeah. It, it is. And it's literally the system that gives us the information out of our body that goes into our brains that creates feelings. Feelings ultimately come out of the body. Emotions come out of our mouth and face, right? They're, we're putting them states out, they emote. But feelings are things that come from the body. And the parasympathetic nervous system is the major inflow to the brain from the body. I had never woken up to pee in my sleep like Ever and all of a sudden, overnight, I'm waking up six, seven times a night. There can be a lot of things, though. And I was like, "Wow!" This, but then once I got, you know, once I followed all these steps to, you know, with the vagal nerve, vagus nerve, or whatever, and the parasympathetics, now it's like it's going. It's like slowly started to go away. Mm -hmm. what, what else do you think it could be? Lots of things slowly go away. They're like that. Lots. Well, let's see. I want to know. Uh, just uh, allergies. Uh, just uh, irritation of the urethra. Prostatitis. Uh, 
you know, it, and then my, my heart was racing, like all that stuff. That's all part of waking up middle of the night, the heart racing. I mean, just being sick that can happen. Of any kind of any kind of infection can do that to you. All right. I don't know. I would I would need a bunch more information to sort of we kind of go and it can be almost anything. That's the point. And you got to kind of go in a certain direction based on what what objective findings there are. Because it was so weird. Because I've dealt with anxiety before, and mm -hmm. this was I had no anxiety, but mm -hmm. my body was acting like I did. That's right. what it felt like. Where yes. I was like, hey. It's okay, like yeah. calm down. So there's but I'd be some sort of bed. sympathetic activation for something, and it can be activated by all kinds of things. Some of it's emotional, some of it's not. Some, of it, but it's fine. It's it passed and good, you know. So, I I, I suspect you probably had some sort of weird strep infection because strep can have all kinds of protein effects on brain, and you know, you know, scarlet fever, rheumatic fever. There's all kinds of things that happen from strep infections that we forget about because people take antibiotics right away. They never get those complications. Yeah, yeah. Pandas, all that stuff. That's all strep yeah so i'm wondering if you had a strep infection under all that that's what i think it was because that's yeah. what they had and they were like really sick yeah yeah it could be all right uh, mm, 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 uh they're still laughing at you do we <laughs> <laughs> so your taint burns and so, he's been laughing for 20 minutes yeah, about that yeah, line can't, can't stop. <laughs> so uh do you have any medical videos for us mm, i'm wondering yeah one okay. second here I did uh, where my mom's at the other day, and Christina P. showed me one of some a worm in someone's brain. It used to be very common. Jesus. Cystocercosis, we used to see it all the time. It was the leading cause of seizure. It was so funny to us. I worked at a county hospital, and we were seeing all these immigrants up from Central America, and they get they get they get tapeworms. The eggs go up in the brain, Jeez. and uh, it was exceedingly common. It was so funny for us because we'd open the textbooks on seizure, and at the very end, they go an exceedingly rare potential for seizure is this thing called cystocercosis. You'll never see it. We saw it all the time, all the time. All the wow. time, yeah. And you'd have to, you, the the way to find that the way you, to find that out is by opening CTs, somebody. CT scan, CAT scan. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see it right away. Normal foot, drop foot. When the foot drops. <laughs> yeah, she has a foot drop. Yes, poor foot can't. Yes, correct. She has a foot drop. Can, can be caused by all kinds of things. Okay, she has a foot drop. That's just it's just it's just the, you know, the flexors don't work. That can be nerve injury. It can be a lot of things. Back problems, spinal cord problems, caught a quine of problems. Tattoo infection. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, some people get these uh, peculiar tongues. Yeah. That can be a problem or it can be part of her thing. Sometimes the white is yeast, right? So you worry about a yeast infection. Uh, you also worry about certain nutritional deficiencies and people with certain kinds of weird patterns on their tongue. And some people just have weird patterns on their tongue. So you're, you're all right. You look a little yeah, gross. No, it's just that. like, ugh, it's, it's still the morning for me. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Yeah. Speaking of morning, you, 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 you dropped a bomb on us uh, when you said that uh, so you get here by one o'clock in the afternoon, you have to get up at eight in the morning. Well, I got up at nine in the morning. Why? Just to give my, because, well, I don't drink coffee. So mm. for me, I don't just shit on command. You know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, I want to wake up. I drink like, you know, 90 ounces of water or whatever I do and try and get myself to poop. Because if I come here not having poop, I would just be preoccupied with it. And I like to, I like to poop before I go out for my day. I have a poop ninja I can introduce you to that could maybe coach you up a little bit. Any, can you help this guy? But I, no, no but, but he wants it is, is what he's saying. He wants this life. He likes he, it. He, he likes the dependency on his shit. Yeah, he's like I just fine. I poop. I poop every day. Like you know, within two hours after I wake up, ish. And, and couldn't you go on about your day for those two hours? And then just make sure you have a. Time oh yeah, set I can. Aside? But as long, okay. I only shit at home, so I'll be somewhere around. It, it, you, as long you, as you only shit at home because home. that's all your body will allow you to do. I only want to shit at home. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to shit in public. I'm disgusted, absolutely disgusted by shitting in public. Yeah. How about the lovely bathrooms here? They're not bad. No, I don't want to shit around coworkers there, in public. There's either. even a there's even a, a squatty potty in there. If you've noticed, yeah, that, that Bert. thing looks clean, right? <laughs> Clean Bert, as I'm sure Bert used. I saw one in his bedroom. I would love for you to get like a, a you know, what we should do we should take a, a Q tip Bacterial and swabs. rub it and then leave that Q tip in the thing on this on this desk for yeah, a week or two and see what happens. Yeah, we'll just do the, the bacterial, you know, the plates. We'll plate it up yeah. and see what grows. Yeah, not so with shitting at work. But any unit, you don't dig that either, right? You understand this, man. Uh, oh, uh, not shitting at work. Not shitting at work, yeah, not, not shitting, shitting in public. In public. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rob and I are, are oddly similar in a lot of ways. It's bizarre. Yeah. Like yeah. what else? What are you thinking? Uh, shit, I'm forgetting what the So you eat, he eats. Eats a ton, he intermittently fasts, and then he eats like fucking, you know, nine meals in one sitting. That's I completely understand that. 
is, we, he, are he you doing that, that to yourself or is that because you're, you're how you're hungry? I've always, yeah, that's just, just I, I eat works. one giant meal a day. I'm satisfied and I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. It makes perfect sense to me. Uh, uh, and then, uh, what is it you're, you think you're not worried, but you're saying that there, there can't be anything good about Bluetooth. So you don't turn it on because you're worried that it might do something. Right, yeah. If, yeah, yeah. if it's like, if there's something like Bluetooth on my phone, it's like, do you want to turn this on? And I'm not using it. I'm like, well, I would leave it off because it can't be good for my brain. How could this magic potion, this magic beam be possibly good for my brain? Yeah, and I'm not my like, oh my God, it's, 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 it's cancer for sure. But I'm just like, oh, I'd rather I'd rather have it off than on if I have a choice. Are you worrying about G5 at all or is, uh, no, 5G? I, I had a, a Uber driver tell me that um, he was... That's what he did. Like he worked on those poles, and then like a bunch of his friends died, and then he stopped and started doing Uber. Because they would, you know, something. There's like something when you're working on that pole or something. And I was like, okay, man, I don't know <laughs> shit about. But he's like, yeah, if you're working on the pole, that makes it's very dangerous. Interesting. Yeah, but he wasn't trying to say like it's dangerous for all of us. Right, he was just saying right. working on the pole. Like, hey, ladies, but that don't. was enough for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. it. I'm well, done. But no, I'm, I'm just, I don't even think about G5. But I, I wasn't going to start working for Con Edison anyway, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Speaking of uh, on the poll, uh, guys, I um, I don't know why this uh, thought came to me, but uh, I made contact with Robert Paul Champagne. Oh. Yeah. I, I thought, love this. Yeah, I thought Rob would appreciate this. Yes. And uh, he was having a tough time. Uh, you'll be, he went to an emergency. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's shocking, but uh, they're fixing his kitchen and his bathroom. Maybe it was hard to tell. I I think this the building came in and insisted on fixing the kitchen. He apparently kicked the workers out midway through the project. They must have been white. Uh, he doesn't like white guys. He just really loves black guys. He likes black guys. Yeah. Uh, and he and I asked him about. The, he has one bathroom that was a, a bad. And I said, "Come on, you gotta let's go." Like the floors were up and everything. It just you couldn't even walk into it. He wouldn't. He would barely let me go near it, and uh, it was a mess. What was the toilet like? Bad. Everything's bad. Like grown, it's just bad. And uh, I said, "Uh, "Dude, Robert, what about that bathroom where they get in there?" Mm-mm, he's not letting them in there either. Yeah. I said, "Come on, let's 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 work on that. Why not?" <laughs> <laughs> they, don't need to, they don't need to go in there. They don't need to. That's exactly where he said. Yeah. <laughs> precisely. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. And. Uh, but I was a little worried about what sent him to the ER, but he was couldn't, couldn't give me all the details I needed to be sure. I asked him to do some things to reduce the risks. You know, the, you're a the, saint. And um, and he uh, he's had his uh, some money stolen, like somebody stole his social security check. Uh, and he did tell me why he gets social security. There were some disabling conditions he had um physically and psychiatrically early on that uh, put him on disability or in social security and he says they're cap they're cap i said, I said who, who's cap oh a- any of robert paul champagne's disabilities that he's getting paid for they're all cap i don't say that what are you talking about i love robert paul champagne oh so do i but you, i thought you would be somebody who say disabilities cap <laughs> bro disability is not funny to joke about what are dude you i thought you about? thought everything could be overcome with what your you brain ta- with what you your doing? mind what yeah. is Okay, good. I'm good to know you have limits. Okay. No, no, I know. He's going to be filing for disability from YMH soon. Something's up. (laughs) Something's coming around the corner. (laughs) So, but he was in, he was in remarkably good, he wasn't in good spirits, but I was able to kind of get him in good spirits. (laughs) He was remarkably. Wait, hold on. You just said he was in remarkably good. Well, he he wasn't really in good spirits. He was was remarkably okay, given all the shit that was going on. Let's put it that way. Right. He was definitely Robert. He was himself. (laughs) Yeah. He was kind of, he was kind of, he was problem solving. You know what I mean? He was going to go to Social Security. He was going to get the check reissued. He was going to go to the housing authority and ask them to delay the, you know, kicking him out before he could come up with the the runt from the Social Security. So he was he was making and he was and he had a plan to how he's going to get there and everything was appropriate. It was very good planning, and uh, I felt kind of good about it. He though, he said that he wanted to apologize to your mom's house, and particularly to Tom and Christina. For having been, I don't know what word he used. Nasty, I think was the word he yep, used. Nasty. Yeah, exactly. So I, was, I was mean, mean and nasty. Yep, mean. And he kind of blamed his medication, sort of. He said, when I take these medications, I get really na- mean. He and left horrible. Co- he was like one of the only horrible comments on Not Today Pal's social media feed. What would he say? He's just like these motherfuck. Like he was just angry. And I, I love Robert Paul, but well, he was just p- motherfucking. It, talk about it on on your show a little bit, and see if he sees it there. Because he he he, I don't think he trusts that we all really have affection for him. 
and really, I, I, my, from the first time I was exposed to his videos, I was just sort of worried about him because it was just sort of like, dude, are you, are you okay? Are See, you he okay? lives like 20 blocks from where I grew up. I knew a lot of people like that. You, I think you said that last time, and I can't get that through my head. What do you mean yeah, by that? Just very eccentric. Like, you know, when you grow up in New York City, you just see, for, like, everybody, like, I love Joey Diaz. But when everybody sees Joey Diaz, they're like, oh, I love this guy because I've never seen anyone like him. Where for me, I love him because he reminds me of home. Like, wow. I'm like, oh, yeah, I knew a guy like this. Like, I've, when you grow up in New York City, you know a guy like everyone, yes. you know? But, but there were a lot of Robert Paul Champagnes where they're just like, crazy like you know all of a sudden you see them in your hallway in a costume and you're like okay i guess it's costume day like oh you that's know? and where what kind of building did you grow up in? i grew up in income housing so that's that's where you really see this stuff right? yeah 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 well that's what he's in right right yeah yeah but and, he's he's a little uh he's a little more uptown than me and the more you go up people say the worse it gets <laughs> you know these were not these were okay buildings. They were. I mean, it was. It well, the was, buildings are usually nice in New York City. Yeah, like, not nice. I mean, because I no, but the, they're the, what I didn't like about them more than anything else was exactly what happened, which was the public health aspects of it. The elevators are as big as this screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the hallways are as wide as this screen. Yeah, yeah. You know, and with no ventilation, no nothing. And I thought, oh, if there's an outbreak of something, these people are in trouble. Just, see, I didn't, I never thought about it as a kid, but I grew up on the 34th floor and just like, oh, one of box. those big ones. That, that's what, yeah, that's, that's what they wa- do. And what those. is that like? And I was wondering what it's like to live in those because you must interact with everyone that lives in the building, right? Constantly. I've, yeah. so, and there was a guy who used to shit in the laundry. Yeah. So you'd go put your laundry in and be like, man, I hope Vinny doesn't shit in the fucking laundry. You know, like there were people who, and who ran. Was Vinny? Vinny was just a mentally ill guy who lived there. Income housing is like, it's like, uh, it's like, I, uh, from what I understand, it's like one step up from the projects, you know, like where it's like, it's, it's based on your income. So some people choose to live there, even though they don't need to live it's, there. It's like, a, it's like affordable for everybody, but within there, they also put people on disability. Very. And, and what happened and, was there were three buildings in our buildings and yeah. our building was the one where everyone who had the disability, oh, like yeah. all, and then the other two, they made nicer, you yes, know, where yes. they wanted people to like, whatever. So yeah, they were fucking lunatics in my build like i remember there were people who had sex in the hallway like they brought out their mattress into the hallway set it up and were having sex and security had to come and like remove them was there uh any kind of custodial supervision on some of the people with the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there was all and then the building had like um you know those little like uh one person cop cars or like if you tipped it over they couldn't get out yes like so they had that uh in my around the three buildings yes, so the, of the course. security and the yes. guy at the front like yeah there was full on well and and unfortunately it's unfortunate we sort of abandoned in this in california we've abandoned that kind of housing or that kind of custodial supervision for anybody so they just go on the streets that's where you that's where those people would have ended up right well they, now that's where they do end up because even that that building that I grew up in that was that way slowly weeded those people out and started charging right now there's like fucking doctors and nurses who live in that building interesting it's where, crazy where, where, where is it which one is it 90 second and second that's where I grew up oh that's a nice area now yeah well I mean Stanley Isaac projects is one block away like it's it, it's, it's, yeah, but it's, it's those are mix they have mix it up I mean we lived on 95th Broadway for a little while and there was kind of projecty stuff right next door and yeah good i thought that was good everybody yeah. living together but it's just not, not like when i you know when i was dating girls they would always be like yeah when i go to your place like you have to walk me out to get a cab oh, well, that's a different this, issue you yeah. know what i mean yeah. but like you know we're like downtown they didn't they didn't think about stuff like that right. where they were like back yeah where then, you now, live is. now everybody it's back yeah. again it's on a friend of mine got held at the gunpoint and they took his phone made him activate it took all his passwords and everything that was on his phone and went out and started unloading stuff. Where was he when it happened? He was in West Village. Can Holy you imagine? shit. Yeah. So that's apparently a thing now, that they're, that they're learning wow. that they can get access to everything through your phone. So this all happened on the street? On the sidewalk. It came up on a, on a motorbike. Two guys, gun. Jesus Christ. It took five minutes because he's... Has him to face activation, yeah. go to your passwords. And then and then they made him change his Apple password so he couldn't deactivate the phone when they went away. Think about that. Wow. Think about that. Don't uh, what did they steal the passwords too? Like what did they want? Everything on the phone. But, Credit well, cards, it? bank accounts, everything. Amazon. Wow. Right? You could just you, in a very short period of time, you could do some serious damage. Holy shit. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah, so uh, good times, everybody. Yeah, shout out to him. Yeah, I, I, uh, 
I've been very upset about that, as a matter of fact. That's fucking, was this midday? No, I, I don't know what time it was. It, he was walking home from work, six blocks from work to home. Wow. West Village, yeah, I know, crazy. I, I wonder, I gotta find out if it was like two in the morning. If it was like two in the morning, it's like, mm, he now, deserved these it. These days in New York, it's like, yeah, um, <laughs> deserved it. Uh, is there, let's, let's do one voicemail to kind of clear our palate, to kind of get our moods back up, to wrap this thing up. Possible Zen pouch test. You guys are too much. Are I'm you gonna do one? That. I'm saving it. We'll see when I feel when the when the spirit moves me. Yeah, yeah. I'm Jay, and I have like probably the worst case of opiate-induced constipation ever. Yeah. I'm. It's such a weird thing that I'm afraid to go to the doctor about it. Yeah. I don't go for like sometimes like three weeks. Yeah. And it's because I've used opiates or the box and the subutex for long periods of times, and it's like horrific and i just don't know what to do you have any tips so um the fact that you're i obviously still on stuff right now you can hear that yeah uh suboxone in my experience is not so likely to do that so i'm guessing you're taking opiates on top of the suboxone i'm guessing and people do do that which is pointless right no because the the mu it turns out that the the um the Suboxone only st activates about 10% of the mu receptors, which is why when you go to surgery and you need post-op pain control, you can use pain medication mm. because the mu receptors are still open and some people will still do their thing. You're not as driven to do it because a lot of it is decreased by the Suboxone, that sort of need stuff. Um, but people still do drugs on Suboxone. That's that's the problem with Suboxone. Yeah. But it, that's this is the problem with oral opiates. They cause constipation. The constipation can be severe. You said it's the worst case ever. No, the worst case ever I've seen, I've seen a couple of these, they have to take out their colon because it gets so bad, they get something called toxic megacolon and they get peritonitis and the colon's got to come out, got to be surgically removed. Uh, the fact that you're getting a movement every three weeks, you're just like any. How about that? It depends how much you're uh, bringing out at the time. But why are you not trying? It's not always workable, but using various kinds of laxatives and things to try to get something to go. Magnesium citrate, you know, milk of magnesia, Ducalax. These things sometimes can get things going, but opiates can be so severe, even those don't work. They make some, the Swiss Chris. Have you ever used, seen a Swiss, Swiss Chris? Swiss Chris is a, is a tea. It's a it's a herb. They it's make a, pills now. Yeah, uh, It's good. It's mild. Turns out it's pretty mild. Um, it works better than magnesium. Magnesium citrate. It's a bottle of stuff. It's, it's TNT. Oh, it, wow. It usually, I think the pill's magnesium citrate. It doesn't do what... Mm, that's probably magnesium. That's not me. That's pure, probably milk of magnesia. Pure encapsulation is magnesium citrate, I think. Okay. I well, I, I don't know. They must Maybe it's the concentration of the way it's delivered, but it, uh, you, you have to drink a bottle of magnesium right, citrate. Right, right. Um, I've never recommended the tablets before. I wasn't aware of the tablets. I have to look at that. Um but, you know, it's a very serious problem, and you've got to deal with your opiate addiction. I mean, that's the life-threatening problem you have, not the constipation, but the opiate addiction. Somehow it will get you. And see if you can get your Suboxone adjusted to where it's not causing this problem and you're not using drugs on top of it. And uh, let's get it going, dude. And also, I mean, if, you have, about you. if you want to have more fun than that, there's a cereal called Kashi Golin. It's good. Kashi Golin Crunch. You can eat a whole box of it with some milk, whatever, and then you'll be... Colon blow? Yeah, you go pretty good. All right, yeah. try that. Opiates, though, did you have constipation when you're on opiates? Yeah, you know what's funny? I did, but also part of me, it just became how you shit. You know uh, what I mean? Right. It didn't, It was. I wasn't aware of anything that I did. Any any symptoms I had, I would never let myself believe it was from the things I was doing. Of course. You know what I mean? I'd of always course. be like, nah, nah, nah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm tired because of this. I'm, I'm yeah. you know, this because of that. Like, you know, so I wasn't, where now it's like everything. I'm like, oh my God, I had, you know. I only I slept like, seven hours I, last night. I appreciate that before the mics heated up, we were talking about your shitting, and now that we've finished, you're talking about your shitting again. So it's, it brings full us circle. full circle, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it is Not Today, Pal, NTP. I suggest you watch it. Rob Liar, Jamie Lynn Sigler. Uh, you, you Rob Liar, What did dude. I say? You said liar. What, Eiler, Jesus. Liar, Jesus. Wow, weird. I, you know what, it, Throwing that you out know what happens <laughs> is... Uh, you're subconscious. No, I, I I don't listen to what comes out my mouth sometimes. And yeah, yeah. what on the look what's on the board there? It kind of looks like liar, kind of, and I think that my brain did that and said that. So there we go. Yeah, you're like Anchorman. 
You just whatever yeah. they put up there. Yes, I, yeah. I, it is. I have a, I have a whiff of that. Trust me. <laughs> I've been reading I've been reading prompters for many years. Uh, but I appreciate you being here, my friend, and taking Thanks the time this morning me. to take yeah. your time having a shit so you can get here on time. Absolutely. And, Anytime uh, for you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And it's uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see you back soon. And congratulations to the show. Have fun with it. And uh, Thank you. I'm just uh, grateful and glad that you guys are here at your mom's house. This is a big deal. So. Grateful, too. Yeah, thank you. I'm happy uh, Dr. Drew's one of my coworkers. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's great. Everybody, we'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.